if you're still measuring the impact of your marketing campaigns based on the leads generated, then you need to stop what you're doing right now. Because in this video, I'm going to show you how to measure the revenue that you brought to the company on your on a specific campaign, a specific period of time, and how to set this up on HubSpot. So let's get going. There are two different ways we're going to see this. The first one is on the contact side, and the second one will be on the deal side, which I personally believe is better for different reasons. The first one, Right here, we're gonna be building report on HubSpot that is gonna have two data clauses. The first one are contacts and the second one are deals. For these, we will have different filters. The first one is the close date of those deals. Let's say we want to know which deals were closed this specific year and the contacts that became a marketing qualified lead because we want to measure among all those deals which of them came from a specific marketing effort, right? To measure this, HubSpot has a specific property on the contacts. This is a Maria, this is a contact, and she has a property that's called life cycle stage. This life cycle stage measures in which stage the contact is. I'm gonna move my face right here. And um, we will know if, if when she converts on her website or do a specific engagement, what exactly happened there. But well, they're there because there's a problem with this specific report and that's why I always suggest going on the deal side for this type of reports. The marketing qualified lead is a property that can be overwritten. This means that, for example, Maria converted in the past, uh, she converted in February this year, and then again, maybe this, I changed it manually, but this is an example, on June, in June, and if this happens, then HubSpot will only take the last date they know. So if I want to know how many leads I generated in this year, Maria is only going to count once and not twice, even though she converted twice on marketing ads. So that's a cashy thing and that's a tricky part that you need to be aware of before running this type of reports. If you're okay with that, then you can go ahead and create this uh, specific report that you see right here and you can configure it by we're bringing the close date in the x-axis and in the y-axis you can bring the amount in company currency of those deals so which is the total amount that those deals that are in the close stage because we filter them here deals that the close date is this year and you can also close um, the stage deal stage is any of one, all closed one, apply, and there you go. Now we have all the deals that would, the amount of revenue that we brought to the company in each quarter for contacts that became marketing qualified leads in a specific period of time, in this case, this year. But uh, my switch to the process goes on the deal side. So let's go on, on the second option, which is doing it on the deal side. And to do so, you will have this specific deal right here. I'm not on the contacts anymore. I'm on deals. And here I create a property that is called attribution. This attribution brings all the different sources that my company wants to measure the revenue from. It's either referrals, prospection, a booking provider, marketing, you define it. In our case, we even have one that's called referral from HubSpot because we received referrals from HubSpot direct sales team. And um, with this, now you can mark this up either manually when a rep gets a deal and they mark them on HubSpot or automatically when you can, you can set a workflow for this. This is an example. I can set a workflow here and click on based on specific trigger Let's say I am going to fill the form. Form submission, form, form, form. Okay, form submission right here. So any form submission, just as an example here, apply, he filled the form. Okay, bear with me. This is getting 
very slow right now. Okay. And now we're going to create a record. This record is going to be a deal. So we're going to be assigning the deal, the deal, uh, the, the our, our, our sales reps, a new deal in a specific stage or in another pipeline when this new lead converts. When I create this, I set all those properties, the contact owner, who's going to call them the close date, let's say it's going to be 30 days. And we also can also add new properties, such as attribution. And this attribution is going to be in this case, because this was a form submission on our website, it's going to be marketing. And I'm going to click save here and that's it. I mean, I can change it still showing some, um, required properties that I haven't set. But this is the way that you can set this specific attribution property property uh, automatically. And also reps can come into the deal when they receive it and change this and say, it's not, maybe it was a referral or it was a prospection because I prospected it too or any other thing. When you have this set up, you can build reports. So it's very similar to what we just did. Uh, here, you're going to have the deals close date is this year. Then the deal one is any specific stage that we can choose two specific stages here. Or you can go for all closed one just to make this very uh, simple streamline. And the attribution is any of marketing. For example, I went to the attribution for the marketing efforts over a specific period of time. And yeah, and on the X axis, I'm going to put the close date, which is quarterly. And the sum of the amount in company currency, which is the property of the deal that stores the value of those deals. So this is all the revenue that we brought uh, to the company. And you can see that both reports can be very different. On this one, we have 300K and on this one, we have 200K. But the previous quarter was 189 and on this one, it was 138. Just because of what I mentioned before. If you go to the contacts, it's going, going to apply a certain type of filters. And if, if you go for the leads uh, status, this specific property is overwritten over time. So my personal advice for my clients is always go for the attribution property on the deal side and create the automations to connect both worlds, the marketing and the deals. And some of you might be thinking, oh, wait, but I use marketing hub in HubSpot, but my sales team it operates in another CRM, either Salesforce, Zoho, or any other. Don't worry. You can also create uh, through different integrations. You can bring mirror deals. One thing that I really, really like is that when we are creating these reports using deals in this property, the, the way that I, that I explained before, you can even break down the information based on the attribution. So if I go to this property attribution as a breakdown by attribution, I will know exactly that amount, how much of that came from marketing, how much of that came from referral, prospection, or even do a pie chart to show that the specific share of it of each of those sources and measure and say, hey, my marketing campaigns accounted for 40, 50, 60% of the entire revenue in this specific quarter, for example. So this is very, very powerful when you're bringing information to the direct. And yeah, you can only do it like that, but you can also bring the source. HubSpot on the deal side also stores the source of the contact. So you can use any of these specific properties, for example, original source. This process makes, so you can use latest source, for example. Maybe this one, let's see. If I go to breakdown by its source, breakdown by latest source. It's taking a while, but here you got organic search, email marketing, direct traffic, online sources. Maybe I don't want to know not only if they were marketing con, if they were marketing source, but which specific uh, channel did, did they come from? So I can use all this property here, or also I could use the normal one that we will use on the contact side, which uh, which are contact source or original source, for example. So that's it for today's video. Remember, we are Triario. We help companies unleash their full potential using HubSpot CRM. So if you're still going back and forth with the spreadsheets and don't have a clear information of what your company is doing right or wrong, 
then we are the one to go. Using HubSpot, we can help you automate all your processes and have clear information to make better and smarter decisions. That's it for now. Have a great day. Go to our website and let us know if you need any help. Bye-bye.